Hello YouTube. In this video I want to take a look at night attacks. In the previous video we looked at uh, ray attacks. And uh, let's just jump into it. So what I would uh, like to do is something similar to the to the ray attacks where if you recall we had this structure here that uh, when we pre-calculate all the rare attacks so let's do the same thing maybe we just do something like this and again we will have and this organization here is not uh, final it will change for sure uh, but for now we, we just want to get something working so the night attack structure will just have a list of uh, pit boards where the pit boards indicate um, which uh, squares the night can jump from from that um, square so let's to, as we always do, set up some tests and let's see, test, um, yeah, what should we do? First of all, I think I would like this bit bot to string to go into utilities utilities and we will make it a public function that way here we can say use create and just night night attacks and we can say like that and what I want is an initialization function um, similar to the rays. If we go here, no, if we go to ray attacks, and then we go here, we have an initialized function, follow the same pattern, and then we'll do something like. Tex is this, and then we loop uh, over all the squares, and we say let uh, a tex from this square. Mm. Actually, let's do something else. Let's do for row and one to eight, and up to including eight. And then we will say text from this square is equal to um, we'll make a function called night attacks from row column and then we uh, push that And let's just say that this function tests whether we can even call that thing. And if we now run it, say, uh, yes, and we need to fix utilities. Uh, cannot find function night attacks. Okay, so it's failing because of 
this function being undefined. So let us define it. <clears throat> And now it should fail because of the to-do thing. Unmatched types, right? And then here we want to do like this, I guess. Great. Okay. Now, what I want to do is basically say uh, so what are the attacks? Uh, it's row minus two, column minus one, or it's row minus two, column plus one, and uh, row minus one, column minus two, row minus one, let's say, column plus two, and so on. So it's like one is either two and the other is one and either one can be plus or minus one so how do we how do we encode that um, we can just say uh, something something silly like this one two one minus two minus one two minus one minus two and then Two one, two minus one, minus two one. Okay, so we just typed it up, and then we want to say. Uh, let's make the bit, bit board, to be zero. And then we want to say for pair and attack pairs. Can we do like that? Then we want to say uh, bitboard equals set bit. So I want to set the bit at this row and then column. Perhaps this bitbot could become a type on its own rather than just a type alias, but but uh, whatever. Mm, maybe we can also do something like this. Yeah, then return the bitbot. So this function that we still haven't defined, set bit. The point is that it uh, it um, just have has an empty bit board, but then it sets the bit at this row and this column, and it should also do bounce checking because actually maybe these i sixty fours they might as well be i. Oops. They might as well be i32s because they will only go up to to eight. Anyways, so if row or column is outside the bound, so let's say if if row is less than one or row is greater than eight column is less than one column is greater than eight then we just want to return zero otherwise we want to return um, one but at the location where because we assume the column starts at one we have to subtract one and then plus row minus one times eight. And I think that should do it. So now at least it should 
compile more or less yes it worked but now we should also check that it's more or less correct let's take this function actually and put it into utilities feels like it belongs there a little bit more And we go back here. Let's just do like we did before. Yeah, whatever. Print some of them to check. So first we initialize. I'm just going to copy this guy. And then we say uh, print pitboard. Right? Isn't that? What did I call it? Bitboard to string. Actually, let's, now that we're at it, let's have a function called uh, print bitboard. So it should just take a bitboard and it will not do any marking, but it will just do bitboard to string bitboard and uh, no marker we, we can have a marker let's put a marker and what's the type it's u size okay and then we say print bitboard night attacks uh, this one and then we run compile but we don't capture the output right so okay so now we looked at the very first square which is this one we looked at the night attack, so uh, two up, one out, one up, two out, two out, one down, there's nothing there, so this looks correct. Let's just do a few more, because why not? Let's do 40. Seventy and fifty-five. So now, actually, we do want this. Fifty-five, seventeen. 40. Looks correct, looks correct. <clears throat> looks one, two, here. So for some reason we're missing this one. And here something is clearly wrong. Why would it go all the way down there? So uh, perhaps, what am I doing? Perhaps there's something wrong with this set bit. Looks correct enough. Hmm. Ah, okay, I found it. So obviously we had 2 and minus 2 here, so that's wrong. It should be minus 1. And now if I run it, correct, 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 
and correct. So let's just double check. 111, 222, 222, 111. Great. So I think that's it for this time. Now we have the night attacks, the ray attacks, and a there's no blocking of night attacks, but still it might be interesting to know if you're taking a piece, but I think we will get to that a little bit later. And next time let's do the pawn moves without Anpassan.